Hi everyone, this is Butch in the W4DXZ Signal Shack, and yes, I am a ham radio operator, hence the W4DXZ. This is a basic overview of some of the features of the Siglent SDS1102 CML+. Plus. It's a 100 megahertz, 1 giga sample per second, dual channel, 7 inch display scope. I purchased this in September, so 7 months late in posting this video. The power on is button is on the top left side of the scope and it takes about 15 seconds for it to boot up. I'd like to give a shout out to Eddie Ahu at his KISS Analog YouTube channel. Eddie has a video comparing 10 scopes under $300. This one costs $299, so see the link below to, to his video. Also, there's a link to Siglent uh, for this scope. For this overview, I'll be using the 1 kilohertz 3 volt peak-to-peak -peak output signal on the scope which is used to adjust the probe compensation. Just to note, the camera I'm using is not that great. I've tried every color adjustment, but the blue border around the display is actually gray, and also some of the menus, as you can see, are somewhat whited out, but I'll try to uh, point out what they are. Also, the display uh, looks kind of smushed. The scope looks smushed, and uh, but the camera is actually, the display is actually Rectangle and not square and six inches wide by three and three eighths inches high and seven inch diagonal To adjust the vertical scale turn the knob above the lit up channel selection And you can see as I turn the knob you can see the vertical scale va value change on the scope This is the knob I'm turning and here you can see the change in the waveform uh, vertical resolution Next, uh, this is the horizontal adjustment. I'll try to get the waveform and the scale value both in the screen. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There it is. So you can see the horizontal resolution changing. So this is the default setting and display, so you can see the channel 1 menu on the right side of the display. Also, anytime you want to return to this default setting, just press the blue default button seen on the upper right side of the scope. There's a knob above the channel 1 vertical scale knob that functions as both a way to adjust the, di the dimming of the display and as a universal menu knob. There are some submenus that display when a menu soft key is pressed, which then lights up the universal knob, indicating it's active. So pressing the soft menu adjacent to the coupling, the universal knob is active, and when rotating, the coupling can be selected. The universal knob is a bit touchy, so you can quickly jump past what you want to select if you don't go slow. If the knob has been idle for four or five seconds, the submenu and light turn off. Or pressing the menu on-off key will turn the universal key on-off. Also, toggling the soft menu key functions uh, the same as the universal key. Other selections in this menu are bandwidth limit on off. So limits bandwidth to reduce noise. Probe one time. So you can select point one times so to a thousand times. This matches the probe type being used to ensure correct vertical readouts. Also, there's the volts per division, either coarse or fine. At the bottom of the menu, you see there is a next page, and there are three pages. So this is page one. You'll see this in many of the menus where there will mul be uh, multiple pages to select from. On page two, the signal can be inverted, and also there's a digital filter that can be turned on and off. With it on, you can select low pass, high, high pass, band pass, and uh, band reject. We'll get to that. Also, uh, page three, you can select units, either volts or amps, SKU, which can be selected with the soft menu key, uh, you know, with, uh, with the universal knob. Also, pressing the on-off button to turn off the menu gives you the entire display for viewing the waveform. Now turning on channel 2, we have the same menu as channel 1, 
before, but now it's channel two and channel two waveform is purple. In the top menu, cursors can be selected. So the cursor selection is either manual, track, or auto. Cursors can be moved by selecting uh, cursor A or B um, and position with the universal knob. And the display on the left provides information on the measurements based on the wave on the based on the cursor position on the waveform. And I'll try to scroll through that a bit and then uh, focus in on the display. And I'll bring up tracking. There it is. Selecting acquire brings up the acquire menu. So we have acquisition. Uh, under that is sampling for sampling accurately. Sampling and accurately display most of the waveform. Peak detect, detect the noise and decrease the possibility of aliasing. Average use of reduced random or uncorrelated noise in the signal display. Number of averages can be selected for to 256. Sign or, or sign X uses sign X interpolation. X uh, X uses linear and sign X is default. Mode is real time, highest real time sampling rate, uh, up to one giga samples per second. Equivalent time can achieve up to 20 picoseconds of horizontal resolution, equivalent to uh, 50 giga samples per second. This mode is good for observing repetitive waveforms. The soft menu key next to the sample rate does nothing. The current sample rate is 2.5 mega samples per second, so it's just an, an indicator. Next is the measure menu, uh, vault, time, delay, all measurements, clear measurements. So basically you select the different measurements you want to see. Display menu, there are three pages in this menu. Uh, page one has type, either vectors or dots. Vectors fill the space between adjacent sample points in the display, whereas the dots have it, there is no link between adjacent sample points. Persist sets the length of the time each displayed sample point remain, remaining is displayed, either one, two, five seconds or infinite. Intensity, waveform intensity, brightness sets grid brightness. Uh, page two, uh, you have either um, YT under format, YT or X, XY. YT displays a vertical voltage in relation to time. Horizontal scale, XY displays a dot each time a, a sample is acquired on channel one and two. Screen either normal or invert color display, grid, selection for the type of grid or dis or non display menu display 2 to 20 seconds or infinite how long you want to menu displayed then on page 3 is the uh, uh, display uh, page 3 skin gives a different color scheme for the display and if you get to a point where you're not certain if you are set up uh, or you you just connected your scope to a signal and you find the best setting press the auto button which is an auto setup function that indicates the, uh, identifies the waveform type and automatically adjusts controls to produce a usable display of the input signal. Very useful. It also has its own menu. Uh, Multi-sign auto set the screen and display to several cycles of, of the signal. Single cycle, one cycle of the waveform, rising edge, falling edge. Uh, you can do undo setup or recall the previous setup. Bottom of the left screen, uh, left screen. There's a uh, some data on the screen in this menu. So utility menu. Uh, you do a self cal, do self test. 
when pressing do self test, this brings up screen test, keyboard test, LED test. And on to the math menu. Uh, so under operations, you can have uh, add, subtract, multiply, divide, FFT, fast Fourier transform, and invert on off, uh, on invert math waveform, off, turn off math invert function. Uh, under FFT, it offers some other selections, of, uh, of course, the, the source, but also under window, there are some filtering choices that are handy, handy, rectangular, or Blackman. There's a FFT zoom, one times to ten times. Also, there's a second page for FFT scale, either voltage RMS for the vertical scale or dB voltage RMS for the vertical scale. Uh, display, you can either split or full screen split on it, or full screen or split. And also you can uh, adjust the range and the um, vertical position of the math menu, math selection. All right, trigger menu. So press the trigger menu, and the knob just below force is, the adju is uh, for adjusting the trigger level and its label level. Lots of choices in this menu, and I won't get through them all, that's for sure. Uh, type, uh, there is edge, pulse, video, slope, alternate. And as you can see, there are different menu choices for each type of triggering. For edge, you can select source for the trigger, uh, channel 1, channel 2, external, external attenuated by 5, and AC line, uh, slope, select rising or falling edge, or select both rising and falling edge. Mode, there's auto, normal, and single. Single acquires one waveform, as you can see and it stops. Um, next page uh, that has coupling choices of DC, AC, uh, HF reject for anything above 150 kilohertz, LF re uh, low frequency reject for anything below 7 kilohertz, hold off, which is hold off time in seconds using the universal knob, and noise reject either on or off. Then there's the save recall menu, um, types, setups, waveforms, pictures, CSV file, factory settings, uh, save to device, you have setups 1 through 20 for save or recall, uh, print function, if, if pressed, displays USB flash drive isn't connected, uh, USB flat drive can be inserted here. All right, so that's about it. Uh, it was brief, but I uh, just wanted to give a quick overview. So thanks for watching. I hope this overview helps in understanding some of the fu functionality of the Siglent SDS1102CML+. Next time we'll have a video on using this scope as a transistor curve tracer. The focus will be more on the scope setups than the actual circuit, which I will provide a link to a video website that gives more details on the circuit. Also, don't forget to check out Eddie Yahoo's KISS Analog YouTube channel for his comparison of scopes under $300 and many of his other excellent videos.